it's been a bit, hasn't it? It's been a while. Uh, I'm, I'm only recording this short thing here. I've, I've got a few other things on on the go as, as we speak. I've got an academic paper that I'm trying to work on and just finished up another little house and a you know, roof on another little house and some other bits and bobs and so on. I've been a bit preoccupied really, but uh, a number of folk have asked me why, you know, if I'm all right, or why I haven't been producing any content and other sorts of things and, and I thought that I'd make a short video to explain where we're at. Uh, it's a bit awkward really because I'm currently driving out to Vancouver because I'm going to look at a discovery out there that there aren't really any discoveries in Alberta and uh, Jaguar Land Rover Alberta or Jaguar Land Rover Canada corporate uh, are not playing fair really and you'll know that I've been attempting to process a take back of Finn to Jaguar Land Rover Corporate and they have uh, they have agreed to uh, to do so but uh, in the green to, the, to this I would have to sign a gag order basically they call it an NDA but the reality is it's a gag order it's, it's a piece of it's a document that prohibits me from from sharing the document with my lawyer and anybody but my financial advisor uh, and uh, and requires me to cease making content that may or may not um, present Jaguar Land Rover in a, in a poor light either the vehicle or the corporate entity and uh, and if I sign it uh, then I'll, presumably I'd have to pull all my content down and I wouldn't be able to weigh in on the forums and uh, offer suggestions or advice on how to fix things or what to do about anything because one of the one of the uh, paragraphs prohibits me from from saying any negative thing about the vehicles or the company uh, and it doesn't just limit me to this vehicle it limits me to any mention of the company or any of their products uh, forever and uh, you can understand that that has got fairly large uh, ramifications for me as uh, as an enthusiast it would prohibit me from offering advice as I mentioned before and it would prohibit me from the social side of the community that I've been very proud uh, to develop and represent and, and uh, it would prohibit me from interacting with everybody here and, and uh, you know moving the, the vehicles and the design forwards in a way that's beneficial to both you and me and all the potential owners but also Jaguar Land Rover themselves and that's a bit of an issue and I don't really know how to resolve that uh, despite being prohibited from sharing the content of the, this contract with my lawyer uh, because of some thing the, the document says I'll show you the, the little the little uh, snippet um, and uh, <laughs> that beep you heard there was the emergency steering active I've no idea why because there's no John road but anyway uh, it wanted it wanted presumably steer me in a different direction so there you go that's a new exciting event um so uh so i'll share this bit of a, a thing with you but i've got a big problem with this because i'm a, you know I'm, I'm not the sharpest spanner in the box he says mixing his metaphors uh but i know a thing or two here and there and i know that there are a few folk that aren't quite as fortunate to be you know as worldly wise perhaps with legal documents and other such things and were they to have this problem they would be prohibited and they read this you know they read this paragraph they would be scared to deliver this this contract to the lawyer and i don't know uh why, why land rover think that's a good thing i i think it's a terrible thing and i think i think it's morally derelict uh, and I, I'm not entirely sure it's legal and I'll explain to you why uh, this may differ from one country to another I'm sure but um, if you're under duress or if something is not explained to you properly and you don't understand it then it has no legal weight carries no legal weight and there's a reason that they ask you the police 
when they've read you your rights, do you understand the rights that have been presented to you? Because if you don't understand them, they're meaningless. They have no content. And so if you don't understand this contract that Jaguar Land Rover says to you, and it's meaningless, it doesn't mean anything, it's not, it's not worth the paper it's written on. And banning you from having your lawyer or your, you know, your attorney explain the contents of this here uh, document, I can't understand how that would be legal and stand up in a court of law because as soon as you walked in the court of law and the beak said to you, well, did you understand what was written in the contract? And you said, no, I didn't understand a word of it. But he did tell me that I couldn't, I couldn't tell my lawyer, then the beak will go, it's not worth anything. Contract's not valid. The, the signee did not understand the content of the, the document and the contract isn't valid. Now, that's only my interpretation. There may be others and I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but I would imagine that that would be an extremely difficult position for Land Rover to win and I've sent it off to my lawyer because I haven't signed it yet <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned if I haven't signed it it's just a piece of paper somebody sent me and it, I can't constitute a secret and prohibited document that they want me to sign if I can't you know if I can't discuss it doesn't like I don't understand it but anyway this is where we're at so Land Rover Land Rover Canada want me to sign this non-disclosure agreement that prohibits me from interacting with anybody ever again. And it also, I mean, if you read it to the letter of the contract, it would also prohibit me from mentioning the defects of a vehicle to Jaguar Land Rover. Uh, because I'm not allowed to communicate in any way whatsoever on social media or in writing or in person or verbally any negatives about Land Rover or a vehicle which means that if I bought a brand new car somewhere along the line, brand new Land Rover and then something fell off I would be in breach of contract if I took it to Jaguar Land Rover and said this bits fell off here can you fix it because a bit falling off a car isn't a constituent function of a car and would be constituted as being a negative uh, you know a negative observation of the vehicles and it would be subject to this NDA and so what I'm basically doing is I'm recording this video to tell you that these NDAs are apparently standard procedure for Jaguar Land Rover and they do it in Australia as well I don't know whether they do it in America I can't imagine they get away with it out there I would imagine that some lawyer somewhere would have debunked this properly but any road this is the story <laughs> and this is where I'm at and part of the problem is, if I don't do this trade with Jaguar Land Rover, I'm going to lose thousands and thousands of dollars. Jaguar Land Rover, it seems, I haven't, I can't say this in any way that's proof, and I mention this in the spirit of, uh, uh, you know, in the spirit of honesty, but without actually having any facts to back it up. But I've been unable to gain any kind of trading value for my Defender in Alberta that exceeds $60,000. Now I bought this car for $112,000 11 months and 3 weeks ago. And if I took 60000 for it, I would have lost 50, many thousands, $50,000 in... 11 months and 3 weeks basically and that's not good is it now I'm driving all the way out here to Vancouver because in Vancouver I can get 74,000 for this car now apart from the fact there's a thousand miles in between there's no difference so I can only assume that the, the places that buy this car if I were to trade it into other places would be Jaguar Land Rover Calgary and Jaguar Land Rover Edmonton both of whom are involved in the, the repair issues that have been uh, going on with this car. So I can only assume uh, one or two things. Uh, either Jaguar Land Rover Corporate has reached out to them and said, don't buy that car uh, because it's either defective or we don't want to give them any money for it or this contract, we want him to sign this contract. Or the second thing is, there's an issue with the car and you don't want to be lumped with it. Now, those three options, I suppose, are all valid, 
but one of them suggests that they're accepting there's a problem with it and they don't want it the other one is just being mean and not wanting me to you know not wanting to not want to enable me to move into another car for some reason or other perhaps because they want to force me to sign this contract and the other one is is the contract which just means that they you know they're just being mean about about everything really they just don't want me to engage in the community and and perhaps affect or influence other people's minds about potentially buying another vehicle another Land Rover or something or presenting to you the faults that may or may not happen with your vehicle or might happen at some stage in the future so I can only assume that the reasons that they're asking me to do these things are pernicious I can't think of any other reason that they would have you know that, that Land Rover in Calgary and Edmonton would only offer me 60,000 where their colleagues out in Vancouver offered me 74 I mean it is possible uh, that in in BC you can sell a vehicle for more money I mean maybe that's a thing I don't know but uh, like there's a big difference in the 74,000 versus 60,000 anyway I'm driving west now a thousand miles because I'm going to look at a, a Land Rover Discovery uh, and I've got a trading price already sort of booked this 74,000 and we'll see where we go I've just got to drive a couple and see what I like and then we'll move on there now this is a big issue to me because if I were to sign the contract with Jaguar Land Rover I would get the payout settlement on the car which is 75,000 and I'd get 9,000 on top but in order to get that they want to take my car for this defender from me and then they want to inspect it in, in Calgary which is reasonably fair but they don't want to provide me with any transport or any deal at that time which means that I'm 350 miles from any sort of other transport without any money without any guarantee of any money and having signed a contract which prohibits me from mentioning the dramas on the social media which sort of ties my hands a bit, doesn't it, really? I mean, if you think about it, Land Rover, Cal Land Rover Corporate offer me a figure, then Land Rover Calgary tell me, for whatever reason, that they're not going to pay me that figure, and they've got my car, and they're 300 miles away, and they can't go on any social media and tell you that they've stolen my car or whatever, or haven't made good on the agreement. And I can't then broadcast it to the press or anything else because of this NDA, so that is a very pernicious situation to be in because it sort of implies that well it, what it results in is is a completely bound set of circumstances which prohibit me from resolving the matter in any way other than legal which of course comes with the the added costs associated with taking Jaguar Land Rover to court now not surprisingly you might be sitting here thinking well there's no reason for him to be taking that but there is a reason there's ten thousand dollars well nine thousand dollars and i'm not a rich man and nine thousand dollars is a lot of money and as much as i love you dearly my youtube videos have netted me a total of twenty seven dollars and sixty three cents since i've since i've had the channel so it's not going to pay me ten grand is it for buying a new land rover <laughs> uh, and so i'm recording this video to tell you basically that the situation is this if you get a dodgy Land Rover in Canada and you go back to Land Rover corporate and attempt a take back they're going to make you sign this NDA which might be fine for you if you're not like me and you don't really weigh in on the forums and you don't want to be part of the community and you don't actually care about how the brand moves on and I do so I'm going to tell you now that if you sign the contract and, and of course you should do what you feel you need to do if that's the case but uh, I, the, the, the document is a bit pernicious as, as far as I look at it and it also means that you might experience some difficulties actually moving your vehicle on if you don't sign the NDA because it seems like there's some corporate machinations going on at a level unbeknown to me and and other people in, in the sort of dealership level uh, where they're not providing you with the appropriate or reasonable or even uh, deserved value of your vehicle and then we're sat in a position like this aren't we where I'm driving 1200 kilometers or whatever it is 750 miles to go to Vancouver because they're the only place I can get half decent value for my car 
And if I go out there, which I am, I'm on my way now, and I find the thing, I've got to come back, because I can't buy it this week, because I've got to settle the finance somehow, and that's another story. So, um, so it's, you should be aware, is what I'm saying, that the way that Thierry Bollery, or whatever his name is, the CEO, the chap that's meant to have a, your best to yours and my best interests at heart, this chap that's recently published in several motor magazines that he's going to actively engage the reliability issues of your vehicle, if he has any, if they have any, or your car has any, and the mechanism he's going to do that by is by silencing you. So that you can't tell anybody how defective your vehicle is because you're legally bound not be able to. And I think that's a bit mean. I think not only is it mean, but it's completely missing the spirit of Land Rover. And I think the guy wants to lock himself in a dark room and give his head a shake. Because to be frank, I find his attitude to be morally bankrupt, woeful, bordering, bordering on illegal, and generally disreputed, disreputative, whatever that word is, disreputable. <laughs> uh, and by extension, that of course falls to all of his subordinates. So that goes for all them idiots that are receiving half million dollar paychecks uh, to, to do the work that they're doing, which is basically to shut you up when you've got a problem. And this isn't the first time this sort of issue has been mentioned. There's a chap and I shall link to his video here but there's a chap um, down in Australia who's had a similar sort of circumstance uh, well actually it's not true there's a chap in Australia that's had a similar sort of issue that I've had the difference for him was only $3,000 so he sent it to a bit of a YouTube wizard I don't know his name and I don't know how to about him other than the fact he seems a bit uh, seems a bit excitable um, <laughs> as they are in the Antipodes uh, he seems a bit excitable this youth and uh, he's recorded a video to demonstrate how unfair and unreasonable the practice of gagging is and he's right he might be excitable but he's right and there's a better way to deal with this problem JLR and I'm going to tell you where it is just the same as he said this fella and I can't just remember his name uh, but anyway, I'll link you to the video and you shall find out his name, won't you? But there's a better way of dealing with this JLR. What you do is you say, Oh my dearie me, yes, you have a problem with your vehicle. That's awful. We can't fix it. We have tried. Let us buy the vehicle back from you. Please sign this vehicle document that allows us to take this vehicle back and sort out the possession. And we will attempt to put you in a new vehicle which stops you having any more further drama. Thank you very much for your... Yeah, a contribution and support of Land Rover uh, as a corporate, a corporate entity. We appreciate you taking another vehicle uh, and we will facilitate you getting into it in any way we can. And hereby all the problems go away. The guy that's got a complaint when his vehicle gets a fresh vehicle, Land Rover take back a vehicle that they can presumably at some stage fix. There's no hardship, no bad feeling. There's no trouble with with lawyers and there's no corporate expenses there's no $200,000 fines that Land Rover in Australia would experience in virtue of the course being you know the matter being taken to court by people who have better time and money than I've got and all the problems go away I can't see any particular downside with just being an honest sort of reasonable you know participating company and in, in light of that, what you end up with is positive reinforcement from your customer base, people that actually trust your company again, and you get more sales. The alternative is to make people sign a gag order, they walk away from Land Rover, go buy an Audi, and you never see him again. But I mean, far be it from me to tell you how to run your company, but I can't see how getting hemorrhaging customers is a good idea. I can't see how that is a practical business management like strategy. Which one of the prize prats sat around your big fancy shiny tables in Solihull supping wind, whiskey and smoking cigars while you're trying to determine the direction of Solihull and Land Rover's finest uh, vehicles? Which one of you prize prunes came up with that idea? 
because I can't, you know, like, I'm sure it was a good idea, I'm sure you sat there thought that's a very good idea, nobody can say anything bad about it, but you're all idiots, and if you think that's a good idea, theory baller, eh, while you're coming around broadcasting your, your, I'm going to fix the reliability issues of Land Rover to Motor Trend magazine, or whoever it was, or AutoZone, or whatever it was that you were blithering on about, if you think that your way of fixing it is to shut people up, it's going to bite you in the ass. Because folk like me are going to get properly fed up, and one of us is going to take you to court, and you'll end up losing millions, and you'll be fine because you'll get pensioned out with a bloody great paycheck somewhere, I'm sure. And then you're going to screw another company over. But but the point is, Land Rover won't persist. You know, if this keeps happening, the great mark that has been developed by Wilkes and his chaps and Spen King with whom I used to drink beer those folk that, that have put all the effort into making this uh, brand and mark the thing that it is you're going to just sail it down the river because you just don't care well I care and I'm fed up with it <laughs>